What's cracking, guys? I wanted to give you guys a little context um, of what this two-parter thing that will be coming up on my channel. A couple weeks back when I went to the fit meet, uh, I ran into Tyler, who really is a hardcore fit enthusiast. And I, for one, have always been a more civic-based chassis kind of enthusiast, and I wanted to learn as much as I could while I was there and utilize the knowledge that this guy had to kind of educate myself on the fit world. The first part of this two-part series will be based more on the chassis, chassis codes, and things kind of like that, a little bit towards that education. And then the part two will be a lot more about the L-Series engines and kind of the, the theory of what will happen with fits and swaps and how to actually go about doing that. Um, I think also swaps is kind of touched a little bit in part one, but part two will be more about the L-Series engine and more in-depth stuff on that. This is just a little context, so when you go in, you're not really confused. I just wanted to give you that. This is purely just a raw footage. We're sitting in a parking lot discussing, and I'm just kind of like taking in as much education as I can. So I figured uh, you might also be interested in something like that, or maybe there are other people in the world that didn't really know too much about the fit chassis and wanted to learn this is a cool video for you so if you like this give it a thumbs up uh, a like and you know get to commenting in the bottom so that way we can kind of just learn more about fits with that said um, I'm just gonna go ahead and run right into the footage part two should be out hopefully tomorrow so this is not <laughs> You just have to do that. I don't know anything about this. Look at this paint. Look at this paint. <laughs> Look at those stickers. Five horsepower each sticker. Adds extra five horsepower each sticker. It just runs like a motherfucker. Yeah. And if I throw that on, I can cruise at 75 versus wanting to only go 60. So. I have a lot. I've tripped on it. I've burned myself on it. But I used to wear like Bluetooth. I had like Bluetooth earbuds. I used to wear when I was. Yeah, because before I got before I threw that on there. And what's really sad is like everybody looks at that and gives me a hard time. But that is like a four hundred dollar muffler. That's a really expensive stainless lightweight repackable bird. See, right? Like that is a racing muffler. That's worth more than the rest of the exhaust on the car, and it just sticks off the ass end. It's is it just like a silencer, like yeah, that's all. Basic extender. Well, so I've spent way too much time dynoing this motor for racing to try and get what I can because of the rules. And what I found out was that I was gonna make a side exit, like super short exhaust, almost like a, just right under the passenger seat for weight. No cutout, just like one turn, done. Like as little piping as possible. Like exhaust, cat, muffler, none. But I found out that you lost power. And the reason is, is this motor kind of not that great. The Inside the head, the exhaust ports are so small that even with all the work that I've done, it doesn't have good scavenging, so you need the back pressure of a full-length exhaust yeah. system to keep the power up. Like, because when I had a, when I did like the super short exhaust, I made more decibels than horsepower. I made a hundred and three decibels at 99 horsepower. Wow. It was literally like a two-year journey to get this thing into triple-digit power, which is kind of depressing. But it was a big deal. Yeah. Why? <laughs> That's like a seven thousand dollar swap. Yeah, it really depends. No, you get it. no. Uh, all of the parts for a K swap are expensive for There's this car. There's some chips and salsa. Oh, food? You, you, eh, just, I don't need to start. Salsa. Salsa's no, almost, salsa almost ready. We're working on it, but literally the biggest yeah. problem yeah. trying to K swap this car. Ah, uh, no. Nah. No, it's you need like two grand in custom wiring harness, at least. The last one I know that sold from Hasport was 2,500 bucks. Because you have to run two ECUs because this car's early canvas. So the cluster, the AC, none of that shit will work if you don't have the fit ECU. So basically everything. Yes, basically everything. You need to put a race pack in it and make it a race car or get an expensive dual cluster swap. So the plan right now, now that K-Tuner is a thing and K-Tuner's becoming kind of a big yeah. deal, they're making a, Hasport's designing it now and testing it now. They're gonna do a TSX ECU or an Accord ECU and use K-Tuner and try to cut the cost down. But I, my friend actually has the original Hasport Super car. Lego out your car, dude. <laughs> That's right. That's where it ends up, like, God. 
Oh, trust me. This the racing I got into with this was really dumb, sort of. <laughs> but it, luckily, when I got into racing this in t about 2012, all the parts I'd put on it were still legal for the class the car was in. Oh, okay. So I didn't have to change anything. But then I just started trying to make all of that better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that class doesn't let you do anything. You can do an intake, but you can't even touch the throttle body. You have to stop the throttle body. And you can't touch it again until after the exhaust points. So it's literally intake, header, exhaust. And you have to retain a cat. It could be one of the high flow ones, yeah, but you yeah. have to have a cat. There's all these rules about it has to be seven inches from the left side anyway. That's but crazy. It works out. I mean, I started at 89 horsepower. Like I had, I had an intake and I had an exhaust and I had a header and stuff and I was at 89 horsepower. And now I'm at 120. That's insane, dude. Well, the difference is, is it's like, it's like healthy cammed D-series yeah. NA power and I'm way more reliable. I, I still get, I got 40 something miles per gallon, well I only got 38, yeah, leading yeah. the group down here. <laughs> like I can usually, I can usually get to the track on one tank, yeah. run for the whole day. From where? I live in the East Bay. Okay. So like. Okay, I'm from Dublin, so like. Okay, instantly. no, I'm, I'm further. I'm in Hayward. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But, I'm in Hayward. So every like, day. Yeah, it's not that much different. <laughs> no, no, not yeah, that yeah. much different at all. But like, yeah. So like last time, I filled up at the track. Yeah. I did five sessions at Willow Springs, and I drove back. As far as Lost Hills. Okay, I, I Lost think Hills. Yeah. I think I get between 16 to 19 miles per gallon at walk on track. In a fit. At yeah. this point, in a fit. At this and point. I pass people, and it's funny. Yeah. That's the oh, that's the kickers when you try to go by them. Did you did you see the sticker on my dash? Mm -hmm. part, when like, oh, I'm gonna shit. throw it. I'm gonna throw it right here on the bumper for that because I'm going to the track tomorrow. <laughs> I people, actually, people ask you what you have under the hood. Yeah, people do it all the time. It drives <laughs> me nuts. So. I got my buddy to pick up this sticker. Fucking troll face. I'm pretty stoked for that. That's crazy. I'm still gonna get my butt handed to me at VTAC Club. Because those guys are actually like quick. And like that's cool. That's yeah. fine. But like when I went to the track day up at Thunder Hill and I passed the M5, that's a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah, and right? Actually, it turned out that I caught a guy that was in the 370Z, and I didn't realize I knew him from the other racing that I did, because I did autocross in San Francisco for a long time. Jesus. Okay. He's like, oh, it's my cooldown lap. It's my cooldown lap. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you gave me the point by on the main straight. I'm not saying. Yeah. I was just smashing, man. That's not my fault. Damn. This thing's loud on track. I'm sure. I'm well, sure. I mean, just like any hatchback, it's an echo chamber. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I was just gonna ask you, like, what, what are the generations and chassis codes, and that's initially why I uh, wanted to talk to you because, like, like when it came to the Civic platform or everything like that, and that's like where I've lived. But then I'm sitting here and people are saying GD this, and then I'm just like, dude, it's like a whole other world that I've never tapped so, into because oh, yeah. I've never owned this car. So just like my brain was just like, nah, well, I'm gonna let it go. What kind of made us sad in the U.S. was this car had been around for a long time. Yeah. The Fit had been a global platform sold in every country and continent except the U.S. since 2000. Whoa. The first cars are up to you know, like 2001. Is that the Jazz? We, yeah. That's the right. Jazz, yeah. That's what it calls. It's called the Jazz. Yeah. The reason they can't call it the, they call it the Jazz in other countries, um, it's somewhere in the U.K. in, the northern, in one of the northern, northern European countries. Yeah. You can't say Fit because it's like slang word for pussy. Wait, so, okay, what? so they actually, yep, that's why, that's why they call it the Jazz. So, that that's was pretty crazy. Because normally cars have a name in Japan, yeah. and then they change it globally, right? Yeah, that's why I want to put the Integrista badge right. on my RSX, just See? like, come on. But, it's different, because the Fits really well, is the one that's different here. Yeah. And they're Fits in Canada, US, the Philippines, and the UK but everywhere else in the world the Jazz is. But they were sold from 2000, it's really late, it's really 2001. They were sold from 2001 to 2009 as the first generation platform. Okay. And you get a GD1, GD2, GD3. We got the chassis as a GD3. So in the USA, 2007, like six years after they stopped selling it in their own country, yeah. the US got the 
and they only made it for two years. Yeah. The first year, GD3s, you got for 2007 and 2008. And they're identical, except for color options and tire pressure monitoring system. Because, thanks to Bill Cosby, uh, his son crashing that Beamer and dying, I don't know if you know that, that's why government mandates TPMS systems. On newer vehicles? Basically the lawsuit was, you had to buy this $70,000 luxury car, it should tell you if you have a flat tire. And the government's like, oh, good idea. Tick box. And that started when? That started 2008, became government mandate. Think about it this way, cars have backup cameras now, right? Yeah. Because it's a government mandate. Yeah. So. Yeah, all my but, cars are still straight up just wiring ECU. Hell I just don't even want a new car anymore, dude. Like, I'm so you scared know what my daily that, like, is that I, I can't bought? do anything. I went and bought an 80s Corolla. Yeah, dude. Because it has a carburetor and I can work on it and I can get 99 of the yeah. 100 parts it needs at AutoZone. For yeah. Buck. I mean, I drive an 89 hatchback, dude. I'm just like, nah, I don't need a new car. My yeah. friend's got a 2011 CRZ and he's still like, I, uh, I don't know about this anymore, shuttle, dude. dude. I'm too scared about this shit now. What's cool though is there's actually another platform we didn't get in the US. There's a GD4. And it's all wheel drive. Interesting. But they only get the small motor. They get the 1.3 liter. Okay. Um, and that motor is actually a twin spark plug motor, kind of like a diesel. Okay. It's designed literally for maximum fuel efficiency on terrible gas. Because they sold it in places like Malaysia and the Philippines where they're on the RON system instead yeah, of yeah. the Octane system. So you're not getting good gas there. So they designed it so that it would still make power on horrible okay. swill gas. And the 1.3 liter is pretty good. But sure. there's an all-wheel drive fit GD4. Oh, okay. And that existed for several years. And the second generation is the GE chassis. Okay. In Japan, it started in 2010. We got it earlier? We got it in 2009. So they actually started it and tested it in the US before selling it to their own. Honda's crazy. But the GE was sold from 2009 to 2013. There are 14s. But there are 13 productions that just got sold. And 14? Four, there are no 14 no, productions. I mean, they, they just made <laughs> yeah, they just made them in 13 and they sold them. Right. Crazy.